this video, I will talk about the basics of stiffness matrix and its analysis. For this, let us consider an elastic bar element E with two nodes, N1 and N2. At node 1, we apply a force F1 which results in displacement of U1 and at node 2, we apply the force F2 resulting displacement of U2. Here we are considering degree of freedom to be 1 and in the longitudinal direction. And since there are two nodes, there will be two degree of freedoms. Here AE, LE and EE are the different parameters associated with the bar, where A represents the cross-sectional area, L represents length and E represents the Young's modulus. Are basically related with elasticity. Let us consider or obtain the stiffness matrix now. First, let's break the elastic bar to two parts. In the part with node 1, let the internal force be F int acting in the direction of F1. And in node 2, acting in the direction opposite to that of previous section. Considering the section having the first node, the internal force F int can be calculated as sigma A, where sigma represents the stress. We have the another formulation for the stress as epsilon E, where epsilon represents the strain and E the Young's modulus. Next, the strain can be obtained as the ratio of change in displacement by the original length. Thus, we will have the F int as Ea by L u2 minus u1. In order to maintain the equilibrium, the summation of the forces should be zero. That's why we will have the relation F1 plus F2 should be equivalent to zero and ultimately we will get the value for F1 as Ea by L U1 minus U2. Similarly, we can obtain the relationship for the F2. And the relationship will be Ea by L U2 minus U1. And rearranging U1 and U2, we will have F2 equals Ea by L minus U1 plus U2. Combining these two equations, 1 and 2, and writing it in the form of matrix, we will have the relation as shown here. In general, the equation can be represented as the force vector is equivalent to K matrix into the U, mat U vector or displacement vector. Here, Ke is basically the stiffness matrix and can be obtained as the equation shown over here. Rewriting the equation for the two degree of freedom, Ke represents element stiffness matrix. U is the nodal displacement vector, which are basically the unknowns to be calculated. And next, F vector is basically the nodal force vector, which are the known parameters. Next, we can write the same stiffness matrix as K11, K12, K21, and K22. Next, we can define the parameter K11, K12, K21, and K22. And for this, we can imply the boundary condition. So first, let's rewrite the equation. And implying the boundary condition as let displacement at node 1 u1 is equal to 1 and q2 equals to 0. So thus applying this boundary condition we will have f1 is equivalent to q11. So based on this we can define q11 as the amount of force that is to be applied at node 1 which will result in, new, in unique displacement in node 1 
and zero displacement in node 2. Likewise, if you take v1 to v0 and u2 to v1, we could define v12 as the amount of force to be applied at node 1, which will lead to zero displacement at node 1 and unit displacement at node 2. Likewise, we can define k21 and k22. The analysis done so far is based on the conditions of compatibility, static equilibrium, and constitutive relation. I will not be going into details in this one. Let us try for two elements with three nodes next. Here we will obtain the global stiffness matrix. Here F1, F2, F3 are the force vectors, U1, U2, U3 are the displacement vectors and the stiffness associated with each element is K1 and K2. The global stiffness matrix basically represents the overall system rather than the individual element. Here to write the equation, we will also use a trick to obtain the equation in a faster manner. For each equation, for force at particular node, for each displacement vector close to the node, we will take it as positive and if away from it at as negative. Thus, for force F1, we take positive for U1 and negative for U2. This is because here U1 is close to node 1 and u2 is away from node 1. Likewise, we can write the relation for force F3 as minus u2 k2 plus u3 k2. And since uh, u3 is close to node 3 and u2 is away from it, we take u2 to be negative and u3 to be positive. Lastly, for force F2, both U1 and U3 will be negative since both of those are away from node 2. And with U2, K1 and K2 both should be positive and thus will be added. Thus resulting negative for U1, negative for U3 and positive for U2. Combining these three equations in the form of matrix, we first arrange force vector and then u vector and then the and then take the magnitudes of displacement vector to obtain the stiffness matrix thus this way we can obtain the global stiffness matrix for the two element system with three nodes this is the basics of obtaining global stiffness matrix However, for a large number of elements, it will be cumbersome to follow this approach. Hence, in next video, I will discuss on obtaining the same in faster manner. Thank you.